Please rise if you are able for this morning's scriptures. Do you need another, do you need another one? Do you need two? The first reading is from 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, beginning at the first verse. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud, it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects always trust, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. The second reading is from Matthew, the 22nd chapter, beginning at the 34th verse. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and prophets hang on these two commandments. May God bless the reading, hearing, and understanding of his word. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Mm. So here we are. Week two of a love triangle series uh, where we are focusing on the greatest commandments. Uh, Jesus gives us in Matthew 22, which you just heard once again. And so guess what? You're going to hear it again next week too. <laughs> this is the command that tells us that we should love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and some translations say strength. And then there we are to love our neighbors as ourselves. But what kind of love are we talking about here? Are we talking about puppy love? Endless love. Maybe a love of a lifetime. It could be the power of love or something we can't help but do. A crazy little thing. Or a love that will keep us together. Maybe you're humming those along. Maybe, but it's probably not something between muskrats. It's a little inside joke on that one. I was challenged to include muskrat love in this message. Uh, that's it. That's all I got. Sorry. See, in the ancient Greek language, they have three main words when it comes to our simplified word of love. First is filial love, which speaks about brotherly love, uh, the love between friends, the love between co-workers, friends, and family. Another is eros love, which is the love between spouses. But the third, the third is agape. This is how God loves us with agape love. This is sacrificial. It is unconditional. It is best portrayed through the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus loved all people. He might not have gotten along with all of them, and some certainly frustrated him from time to time. I do remember tables being flipped. But yet he still died for them. This is agape love. 
a love that thinks of others before themselves, a love that sacrifices everything. Today we heard the very familiar passage found in this letter written to the church in Corinth. It is a letter that is addressing some questions, concerns, and situations that people in the church were having. Now, I'd like to think that we've come a long way since then, but then we hear the words again, and maybe we find ourselves in the midst of our own situations, and Paul's words seem like they're directed right at us. Let me remind you that the words from 1 Corinthians 13 were not written for the millions and millions of weddings who have focused on them. (laughs) Now please, I mean, don't get me wrong, they certainly speak to the love that is shared between spouses, but these words were written for a different purpose, and I think it can help us understand how, how we can love others today. You see, the church in Corinth was facing disagreements. They didn't They didn't all believe the same things. They didn't all practice the same things. And they certainly weren't following the teaching of Jesus when it came to loving their neighbors. How do we know this? Because Paul wrote a whole chapter explaining what love is, what love does, and certainly what love is not. Brothers and sisters, these words are for us today. They really are. They're for us today, especially as I think about one of the questions that was submitted for our Ask a Pastor Sunday uh, a little while ago. Someone wanted to know how to love people who could be so mean, cruel, and downright unlovable. Hmm. Now, I could answer that simply by stating that we're called to love all people. We're not actually called to like them all. I think somebody's parents probably told many of us that, especially with siblings. You have to love your brother and sister. You don't necessarily have to like them at that point. But you see, there's a difference, and and maybe the love chapter can help us. What is love? According to Paul, love is patient, kind, not rude or arrogant— Love is not irritable, nor does it insist on its own way. Love enjoys the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never ends. That is such a powerful sentence. Love never ends. I would say that that's a pretty complete list if you focused on all those things, because I think if you did, all of our relationships would be far better than what we could ever imagine. But Paul goes beyond that. As he begins this chapter, he talks about some of the things that would elevate people in the eyes of society, the church, and maybe inside your families. However, even if we have all those attributes, we accomplish all that we can in this world, but we do it without love in our hearts, it's meaningless. It's meaningless. It don't mean a thing if it ain't got that cling. Yeah, not quite. (laughs) But truthfully, it doesn't mean anything unless it's done out of love. I think we can see this in society today. We can see relationships fall apart, families dissolve, and, and people with all the wealth and power completely break down because love does not factor into their lives. If we don't have love, life is meaningless. Now, please understand, I am not saying that you need to be in a relationship, that you need to have a spouse, or or that you even have to come from a loving family to gain access to the love that I'm talking about here. Because some of you don't have those experiences. This love that I'm speaking about is already given to you. God loves you just the way you are. Do you need to hear that again today? God loves you just the way you are. God desires to be in a relationship with you. It is because of God's agape love for each one of us that we're able to go out into the world and actually love others. We need love. Paul tells us that out of all these three, these three remain faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. 
Maybe you didn't get the love you needed from a parent, a sibling, or a previous relationship, but I hope that you have, the ex- that you have experienced this agape love of God, maybe from someone else. Maybe that was through the gift of food or hospitality from someone at church or your workplace. Maybe it was through someone offering to pray for you and just to sit and take the time to have a conversation with you. These are just a couple of the small ways that you can show love to others. Again, we're called to love all people. We're called to love our neighbors as ourselves. As we think about loving all people, we have to realize that we are called to love some people that we don't even know. Dave mentioned that this morning. We can see this in Scripture as we remember the story of the Samaritan who stopped to help a man along the side of the road who had been beaten and robbed. He didn't know who this guy was. He didn't know, and frankly, he didn't care. He didn't care what nationality he was or what social or economic standing he held or even if he was a Republican or a Democrat. I don't know that they had those back then. Probably the names, but he just helped him. He just helped him. The Samaritan showed agape lie by putting aside his preference for the purpose of love. And sometimes when faced with a decision to love in this way, we find that it doesn't make that much sense. However, we're called to love anyway. There was a, there was a movie, I, many of you know I love these movies, so here's this movie uh, that's called A Knight's Tale. I'm not sure if anybody, I know... I know Mary knows all about this one, and, and Don, this is one of his favorite movies, or is his favorite movie. So within this story, we find a knight with extremely good abilities at winning jousting. His primary goal as he was learning how to joust was to win the heart of a certain woman. He finally gets the opportunity to ask if there is a way that he can prove his love for her. And he asks her, And her response is a little bit surprising. And so if you've got that clip, I think I've got it queued up there. Jocelyn, how may I prove my love to you? How? Do you ask in earnest? Yes. If you would prove your love, you should do your worst. My worst? What do you mean? Instead of winning to honor me with your high reputation, I want you to act against your normal character and do badly. Do badly? Lose. No, losing proves nothing except that I'm a loser. Wrong. Losing is a much keener test of your love. Uh, losing would contradict your self-love my... and losing would show your obedience to your lover and not to yourself. Really? Shh, woman. Do not shh me and spare him. Now be gone. Go! What is your answer? I will not lose. Then you do not love me. (sighs) It's a little frustrated. To prove his love, he needed to lay down his preference for the purpose of love. He needed to sacrifice all that he knew so that he could show his love for Josette. It does kind of sound familiar. Are we willing to show this kind of agape love for others? Are you willing to show that kind of love for others. Let me ask you a question. How do you show love for others? Even the ones that you don't know? Dave gave you some, some hints. Because <laughs> I think many of the ways that, uh, that we do that here at Journey of Hope, we've got an extensive list of, of local food missions that we participate in, whether it's pads or soup kettle or food for greater Elgin. Those are just a few And we don't probably know all the people that come. Well, I mean, some we probably do. 
Some we know who they are, but we love them anyway through our service. And let me tell you, if you're looking to help in this area, I know this wonderful woman named Janina Hoffman (laughs) who would love to have more volunteers. And so if you are looking for a way to show your love for others, for people that you don't even know, see Janina. She can get you connected. Just reach out and express the love that God has given you by helping in that ministry. Another way that we have been doing this uh, has been through our ministry with Spirit Lake Nation, uh, the ministry center up there. Now, I know that we're unfortunately not taking a group up this year to work, but in the past, we've cleaned, we've painted, we've remodeled, built libraries, wheelchair ramps, put on new roofs, and many, many other projects. Do we know the people that we are working for in their homes? Not, Not usually, but we show the love of God through our service. This is loving our neighbors because our neighbors are everywhere. And another way that we show our love of neighbors is by filling shoeboxes full of little presents for the children of the reservations in North Dakota. And yes, even though we're not sending people on a mission trip, we will still be sending shoeboxes for all of those kids. We cannot leave them without anything this year. That is unacceptable as we strive to show God's agape love for them. We also love our neighbors when we open our building to those who need space. From a coin club to Toastmasters to Weight Watchers and Beyond Church, we offer space for meetings and for worship, expressing the purpose of God's call on Journey of Hope over our personal preference of keeping it all to ourselves. So what are some of the ways that you feel like God is calling you to love others? Where do you feel God calling journey of hope to love others? Will you pray with me? God, there are times we hear messages that speak right to our hearts. And we hear messages of of loving other people. And God, we know that there are people that are just difficult to love, but we are called to love them anyway. We're also called to love people that we don't even know by putting your purpose ahead of our preference, by putting the purpose of the good news of spreading the gospel above our personal preferences. And so God, speak to our hearts, especially as we sing the last song. God, speak to our hearts during that song to let us know that that you are calling us to do something. And for each one of us, it is probably going to be different. But God, I ask in this time that you would speak directly to our hearts at this moment. Give us something that we are looking to do. Give us that, that command the command to go and love others and and give us those suggestions that tell us here is how you can go love others. God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us so much that you would send Jesus Christ to die for us and to be resurrected so that we can also experience that resurrection. All this we ask in his name. Amen. Will you stand and join?